This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Yeah, oh yeah. One of my favorite, I saw Jock with my uh, before a show. And his phone was going off, and his ringer was so loud. Like, I keep my phone on silent all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, non-vibrate, don't give me notifications. And I'm talking to John, and it's just every four seconds his phone's going off as loud as possible. And I was like, what the fuck is up with the loud thing? And he's like, my wife's deaf. She can't hear shit. She doesn't notice. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. <laughs> on that note. God, I love Jock Sand. Just intro the Indie Mayhem show. And, intro the in, Indie Mayhem show is a half an hour of oh, Indie Mayhem and half just, an hour of just Jock Samson talk. Yes. You ever ridden in a car with Jock? No, not far. I remember riding in a car with him, Linda, and I, uh, one of his green boys once. Yeah. And Linda's driving. He's in the passenger seat just looking at her. Hey, Linda. <laughs> hey, Linda. <laughs> you want some of this dick? <laughs> You know, some of this jock dick? Yeah. She actually, like, when he used to do promos, uh, she would do, like, signing in the corner. Like, she would sign the promo so you could understand. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it's a lot, of, but it's a jock Samson promo. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like when I saw, you know, we're just going to cold open Mayhem, Andy Mayhem this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? So, uh, yeah, so we, we have our guests. You've met them. We'll, we'll proper intro in a moment. But uh, jock Sam, uh, So so it's kind of like, I watched uh, Kevin Smith, uh, Smodcast, and Jay and Silent Bob, right? Mm. And there was, you know, the sign language person on the side. And, you know, they get in some really interesting and colorful language. And they were, they were just at one point saying, hey, what's the sign for this? Yeah. And, like, kind of messing with her at, at, at one point because they were watching her, her react to it. Because it was, like, at Heinz Hall. So <laughs> that's the library. So they're going to, like, provide somebody to sign, right? Yeah. Uh, is for <clears throat> something like that. So, yeah, just that would... Jo- Jock's promo. There's a remix promo with him and Fontaine, mm-hmm. where Jock is uh, like post match in a shower, and he's naked, <laughs> showering with soap, and he's like, "Man, Fontaine, I'm gonna f- kick your fucking ass." Like yeah. it says, like "fuck" in the promo because we're like, "What are you gonna do?" And he's like, "In the next show, I'm gonna beat you to an inch in your life." Now I'm gonna wash my balls, and that's how the <laughs> promo ends. <laughs> Oh, we're in that earning that explicit tag this time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Marcus Mann and Shooting Reaper. Pew pew McInard. pew pew. pew. Connard. 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 It's Connard. too late. I need more caffeine. I can't say. I'm out names. of booze. You're out of booze. We're in a good spot. I get. I, I'm getting messages by a good friend of the show, Jack Pollock. Mm-hmm. Bring beer now. Bring beer now. Yeah, he's out. Oh. Uh, he's out drinking, and he's he wants to party. Yep. And um, we like to party. Yeah, we're a partying bunch. Except Matt. But this is the Indie Mayhem yes. show. I'm you excited guys joining us. I don't know what the hell's going on because you just downloaded this podcast and we're like, what? What is this? Usually, there's actually an intro and 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 things and stuff. And uh, but uh, Marcus Mann joining us, of course, Rise Wrestling with a Y. We uh, it's on, had it's on my shirt. Officially, it's on your shirt if you're on the video. Yeah, of course. You know, right? Hashtag Rise Above Hate. Love it. Good Love shirt. It. I still need to get mine. That's a nice shirt. It's a very soft Let's shirt. Look at that. The material's it's nice. It's a soft the material. There you uh, go. 15 bucks. <laughs> That's just cheap for a shirt. Is that, is, that, is good. that is good. Like 15 is cheap for a shirt. But uh, so we, we just had you guys on the Wrestling Mayhem show as of the recording. We're time traveling a little bit. You guys, of course, listen to us maybe a little bit later if you're not joining us live. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we just had the announcement for what's coming up with Rise Wrestling and kind of a spinoff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to get into that and we will transition to that. Um, we had you on in studio here, so it's within the last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we talked a lot about the philosophies going in the rise yeah. and things going in, on over there. Um, so you're in well into halfway through year two of Rise Wrestling. Yeah, you guys are kicking ass. We talked about a lot of the mayhem. We're trying. Well, what, what is what is happening with Rise Wrestling? You talked about a little bit of a you know you guys are rearranging things. Yeah, uh, Matt's main eventing all the time. Yeah, uh, Matt has, um, one of the reasons I wanted Matt here to talk about a lot of this is, is Matt has become, um, 
a good embodiment of what we wanted the company to be as far as a, a leader. Um, and mm-hmm. Matt has, and I've known Matt, God, what, five years now? Yeah. Something about, like that. About five now, yeah. I just asked, I, did, I knew the answer, but I asked because I wanted, I didn't want to talk through a burp. That's fair. Yeah. Um, You're better than that. <laughs> uh, no, Matt and I have known each other for a long time and, and we connected in, in a lot on your podcast and we mm-hmm. talked philosophy mm-hmm. and, and we've, we've learned a lot together. We've had similar mentors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got busy and Matt has helped a lot with where we're, how we're reorganizing the company and, and mm-hmm. how we're doing that. Um, and, and the big thing is for us, um, we talked about this a little on the Mayhem show. You go to a wrestling show um, and if you're backstage – you talk to a booker or you talk to a promoter and you have questions about what you need to do. And they're just so frazzled. They're running around like crazy. Um, and I was talking to, um, you know, an old promoter or a booker that I used to work for. And I was like, I used to be so mad. I would come to a show and be like, I need to figure out my segment. Mm -hmm. My segment is the most important thing to me. And I need to know what we're doing at what my time is, what we're doing. And I, go to look for him and I'm like, where the fuck is the guy who knows how, what we're doing? Mm -hmm. And he's off putting batteries in a microphone. And you're like, delegate that to someone. That's not important. I need to talk about my segment. And then like, as I've moved into that role, um, I find myself putting the the batteries in the microphone. Cause you're the only person that thinks about it. Yeah. Cause you sit up at night going like, okay. And then this guy's going to come out for a promo and like, what if the mic dies? Oh, I need to get new batteries for the microphone. Like you're thinking about like when you're in that position, you're always thinking of like, how is the show going to fail and how, what can I do today to prevent the show from failing? So when you're at the show and you're frazzled and you're doing that stuff, you just don't have the time. So Brandon, who's does a ton of the production stuff, the promotion stuff, and then the glad handing of, Hey, thanks for coming. Here's a flyer, that type of stuff. Uh, I'm doing production stuff. I'm handing it like, Hey, Brandon, here's the promos that we did last show. Here's the editing for it. We start stretching ourselves really, really thin, and Mm -hmm. we learn from that. And and I want to point out, like I was saying before, um, most indie shows don't even have as many people as you have handling a a show like this. We do. And and when I talk about, like, uh, we have a creative team, yeah, um, which is different. When I saw there's agents on the run sheet, that surprised me. Yes. Uh, and, and I believe when I, when I put on for tonight's live feed, I said one of the evil geniuses behind Rise Wrestling. Yeah. I mean, the other evil geniuses I have in there are Shirley Doe, Doe and Jake, Jake Garrett, Garrett, the axe murderer. He murders axes. <laughs> and Shirley Doe, who is, you know, the the god of hellfire himself. Yes. Yes. They're evil people. I, I you know what? I, I, I got to put, gotta, not because he's going to be here in two days for a recording, but uh, I got to put up because somebody's like, I don't know what Shirley Doe does, you know, and, and et cetera. I was like, no, Shirley Doe has a purpose. And Shirley <laughs> Doe is very good at the thing he does. <laughs> Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it, yeah. th- th- when you think about it, yeah. And we talked about when I was on the first show um, about those two guys who mentored uh, me and Matt, mm-hmm. both yeah. of us, yeah. I mean, and, and mentored us a lot. And so getting the ability to work with them, what we found is having the agents, having Doe, having Jake, having this ability to keep things on the rails at all times. You have someone that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. If I'm busy, if I'm talking to the main event, you know, uh, this show, upcoming show, we got, you know, Matt and Lee. If I'm having a conversation with Matt about something, um, you know, and you're on the lower card and you need to talk to someone, Jake is there for you. Mm-hmm. Doe is there for you. These mm-hmm. guys know everything. We have sheets to, to work through and work that type of stuff to keep guys on the rails, to keep everything uh, you know, more in line. And I've been really, really proud of that process. That doesn't mean that process has been perfect in any sort of no, way. No, no. Stuff happens. A, a lot. Um, and things go off the rails sometimes and you look back and you're like, okay, how do we fix it? So, uh, we reorganized a little bit. And and one of the big things I wanted to reorganize was, um, I have been dealing a lot with, uh, talent and creative and that me, Jake and Doe have kind of held that on. Um, what I realized is, um, (laughs) me being in charge of things or, uh, head of, of this, you know, or director of this, I'm not intimidating in any sort of way. (laughs) I'm not a big person. Okay, all right. Like, I'm a very small human being. Um, And so when running security, when working with officials, um, that is something that was thrown on my plate. And so um, I talked to Jake. And so Jake Garrett has taken over as kind of this head of security and officiating. So if things get out of hand, if things are are working a different way, uh, if if, if there's some sort of issue, Jake has kind of taken that on. Because Jake is an intimidating dude. Because not only is Jake uh, an axe murderer who, who... 
fight you, Jake always has a knife. Always. Jeez, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's real. It's real, and it's fantastic. Um, and so, like, that is an area that we were like, okay, no one is better at that than Jake. And so Jake has kind of took taken that uh, role on for us, which mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very, very happy for. That was route one. And then having the conversations, we realized that at the shows, Brandon and I love talking to fans. Mm -hmm. We just don't have time. Yeah. It's tough because you have so many people pulling you in so many different directions. Like you and I have been after a show where the show is finished and I would love to get out in the lobby and be like, what'd you think? Mm -hmm. What did you like? Who Who did you? And you and I are having conversations about like, okay, well, I need to get this file off of you and i need to get these promos off of right. this guy and i need to right. do this because I, like sunday is the next day and i gotta start advertising and i it, gotta get stuff done it was even interesting to me to realize at a rise show how people don't know i'm there yeah because i'm up in the booth and 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 we're dealing with all the stuff that we're dealing with. yeah yeah and it's it becomes a, an entire thing and like here's another secret about marcus man i don't drive um, I don't have a car, so like this guy chauffeurs me everywhere. Yeah, another reason I'm here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so Matt will like give me a ride to the show, and then Matt's like, I gotta work in the morning, and I'm like, I'm having meetings with Brandon. I'm having like these after things, and I just don't have time. And this isn't. It's not an insult to fans. I really want to talk to them, but I have so much to do that it doesn't. It, I don't always get that opportunity to talk to them, and mm-hmm. that's kind of hurt us in a way. So one of the areas we added was uh, bringing in uh, Billy Johnson. Um, if anyone knows Billy, um, he ran shows down in West Virginia, uh, down in New Old, uh, down in that area for, uh, God, how long has it been? Seven, eight years? You were at one of those first shows, weren't you, Sorg? The New Old shows? Uh, I was at some of the IWC ones. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I think I was at all except the very Those first were what, one. Those were what, like two thousand nine? The IWC ones, yeah, uh, two thousand nine, yes, yeah. Yeah, I remember a lot of Lu- Logan Shulo on it, yeah. and, and, and you know, that, Mitch that Chesney was down there. Facade, uh, DJ, Babyface be- Fire. Before DJ Z was DJ Z, yeah, because he was the hometown boy. Shima Zion then. Um, Billy's been involved in that type of stuff for a long time, running shows, um, going to shows, um, and, and Billy has a good voice in that type of area, but he knows what fans are looking for. But more importantly. This is a guy who fans can have access to. So what we're asking is uh, Billy's going to be running some pre-show stuff, some intermission stuff. But also what he's going to be out there to do is um, talk to fans. So if you think someone is um, more deserving of something, if you think that someone's getting screwed over and not getting their opportunities, if you think a a wrestler on the card uh, is uh, better than we think they are or, or things like that, that's the guy to talk to. That's the guy to get your voice. Cause he's going to be the fans voice in our meetings. When we talk, he's mm-hmm. going to be the guy to be like, you know what I'm hearing from the crowd. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting with these guys. Yeah. You're in a booth, which is, uh, the sound doesn't travel that way. No, it's a, it's, no. a, it's a movie theater. Yeah. You know, you're not out there. This is what I'm hearing. These are what people are saying to me. And to us, the most important voice in any wrestling company is the fans. Mm-hmm. They're the people that buy the tickets. They're the people that watch the product. And we realized that, the only way we were getting their opinion was just by how much they were yelling or booing or things like that. And we wanted to have an ambassador and someone out there that can be in charge of their experience, someone that they can go to, someone they can talk to and really help us bring that um, fan interaction in. It, it's something that we've, we've, we've felt that we've been missing, you know? That's good. That's good. I'm liking the delegation. <laughs> and then it actually kind of sticks out a bit. Because so, uh, I've seen I've seen promotions delegate new regimes. This guy's taking this. This guy's taking this. But it still just ends up falling on the promoter. Yeah, and I've and I've been to those organizations. And that's yeah. not to say that they're doing a bad job of it. No, 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 no. Man, some guys are Superman. Man. Yeah. You know, and and like uh, I've never I don't know the guy, but I do know stories of of guys like Gabe Sapolsky up at Evolve. That guy's Superman. Mm-hmm. Like he takes a lot on in what he does. Um, Vince McMahon is Superman. Mm-hmm. He doesn't sleep. This is what he does. Some people can get in that mode. Some people are able to. Some people just don't have that DNA. Well, and the thing with Rise is, um, and, and and Matt and I have talked about this pretty frequently. I just keep like like people to know that he's here. Hey, hey, <laughs> um, <laughs> now is Rise was a Rise started as a, a company that everyone was learning. So outside, like 
So Matt was one of the few guys that joined our roster that had main event experience, mm. that had worked main events before. Mm-hmm. You know, guys like, you know, uh, Lewis and Lee Moriarty and uh, David Lawless and Sean Phoenix and those guys, Christian Noir, they hadn't had main event experience. They were young guys that were doing stuff. Mm-hmm. I, when I came in, had no experience doing the job that I do, mm-hmm. w- helping with uh, running creative, working with agents, working with these types of guys. I had done creative. Mm. I had been on creative boards and pitched ideas and controlled uh, segments, but never a show. I'm learning on the fly. Brandon has never run a company before. (laughs) (laughs) So he's learning on the fly of Mm -hmm. like, okay, what advertising is working? What is this? You know, how are we promoting? Right. We're all kind of learning together. But also you have some of a experience because on the outside interpreting, I was like, oh, hey, these are guys that, you know, I've seen in these companies for years and years. Seemingly uh, know what they liked and didn't like from it and went to do their own thing. Yeah. And that that's usually where something interesting comes out. Well, and, and when we first started, Brandon was like, you need people. We need people with experience. So who do we get? And that's immediately where we talked to Doe and Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Doe had booked... IWC for a very very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe and, through the golden years of IWC, yeah. if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Um, he was um, one of the main players there for a very long time, um, and, and was one of the smartest wrestling minds that I got to pick apart. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for us, n- like what I modeled everything after was what Jake was doing at Black Diamond, mm-hmm. because Jake was the guy who found. Jake gave me my first opportunity ever. And you can talk to a lot of guys in this area and they will say the same thing about Jake Garrett. Jake Garrett gave me my first match when no one would book me. Jake Garrett did. And so that was a big part as well of someone that I wanted to be a part of the company and, and just, just to help me understand that I realized that we couldn't buy experience, but we could, we could find people that had it and help us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, throughout the week things get, said and produced and then picked apart by those two guys. I mean, they are, they are vicious when they go over stuff <laughs> specifically Doe. I mean, yeah. that dude is vicious when he goes over stuff. Doe will love an idea and still shit on it. Like just to make it bulletproof. Mm-hmm. If I can shit on it, then someone can shit on it. Yeah. And he's just so good at that. Um, so that was what we brought in. And so when we, when we develop it, great, it's something fun. And we do, uh, I took, I took over about October. Mm-hmm. We're about eight, nine months into that. We start looking into it and go like, okay, what are we missing? And like I said, the number one thing we were missing was a fan voice, you know? And I think that's a big problem with, with companies in general. And that's the big complaint people have about WWE. My voice isn't getting heard. Mm-hmm. I can tweet at you and I can cheer and I can boo, but I'm not seeing what I want to see. So how do we get a direct access to that? Mm-hmm. How do we, how do we bring them in? Because on a local level, it's way more important. Mm-hmm. You know, if, there's, there, there's, there's less reason to not have that. Yes. So, so like, you know, at WWE's level, where am I going this way? Yeah, pull your mic back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll> uh, <lose> <laughs> you. So like at a WWE's level, you know, if they have, let's say, you know, 30 million fans and 10 million don't like Roman Reigns, they still have 20 million people that like Roman Reigns mm-hmm. and they have to deal with that. And that's fine. And you can deal with the cheers and boos. But on our level, if we have a hundred people at a show and, you know, 30 of them don't like our main guy who's a baby face. Mm-hmm. That's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. And we have to figure out how we deal with that and, and who we're bringing in and who's, who's not coming to shows now because of something and who wants to come to see something else. Or even, or even what's going on between fans. Cause I've seen yeah. um, fans get mad at other fans because of how they behave at certain shows and mm-hmm. that drives them away too. Yeah. So then what does that do to the kind of culture around the show? In the, in the in the crowd and that's great and i would love to be and i said we'd love to be able to grab fans and talk to them so this is the access that we do and, and billy is just such a perfect host for that if you've ever met the guy the thing he loves more than anything else is being a host mm-hmm. of taking care of people and being like hey i want to talk to you mm-hmm. billy loves sitting down to have a conversation mm-hmm. with you mm-hmm. so i think he's the perfect guy for fans to grab and like i said we're gonna do some fun stuff too we're gonna do some pre-show barbecues we're gonna do some meet and greet type of stuff. And, and as the company moves forward, I think we're going to be in a really good spot. And I don't want to go too deep into all of that. Cause that's just kind of like, yeah, a little inside baseball. It is, but yeah. it's, um, to me, I think 
um, something that we're trying to do to set ourselves apart. And that's mm -hmm. every day a conversation of what can we do next? What's yeah. the next thing? Yeah. So let's get into the, the big announcement you just had on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Of course, this new kind of venture that you guys are, are, are doing with uh, uh, Uprise. Yes. Uh, which which is why I brought Matt here. Hi. Um, so <laughs> how long have I gone so far? We t I said this was going to be an hour. What yeah, we're I about 20 minutes in. Yeah. 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 Right on schedule. Um, so... A uh, quick, uh, like uh, we talked about this on the Mayhem Show, but I do want to tell this quick story. Um, and this is a, a, a little bit of a personal story, mm -hmm. and I didn't get deep into it, but I kind of brushed on it. Um, there was a time um, back uh, years ago when I was I was pretty much going to be done with wrestling. Um, I had been got I got real frustrated, I think with myself, but with the, with the industry and that type of stuff, and. Um, Full disclosure, I was working for PWX at the time, mm -hmm. which Matt and I have talked about. Can, it was frustrating at the time. Yeah. Um, and I, I talked to Quinn, who had, uh, Quinn had been a good mentor to me and really helped me creatively and stuff like that. And I told him, I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm walking out the door. I can't do this anymore. And I remember he called me and he was like, I get it. I get where you're at. But I got this idea. And I was like, okay. He was like, I want to run these future shows. And I want to run shows for young guys. And I was like, Okay, he's like, and I want you to be heavily involved. And that brought a passion to me at that moment for young, undiscovered talent because I went all in on that. And ever since that day, that is the only thing I've been able to think about in wrestling is who is the next guy? Who are the guys that no one is seeing? Who is the guy that in a locker room is feeling dejected and that he hasn't gotten an opportunity yet? And I have gravitated to those those misfits and those broken toys and those types of people in wrestling. And I don't know why. Ever since that day, it's just been like a total focus of mine. And so when I got to Rise, that was the goal of Rise. Mm -hmm. This is the place for the young guys. This is the place for you guys to get an opportunity that you never get anywhere else. And it was, again, the Lee Moriarty's and the David Lawless's and Duke Davis and Gannon Jones Jr., and Sean Phoenix, and Christian Noir, and Lewis, uh, Dalton Throttle, London Ali, these types of new, fresh, they're not getting their fair shakes because at the time, and this isn't to, to, to take anything away from these types of people, there was fantastic guys on top. Mm -hmm. You know, Lee Moriarty was getting, you know, there, but there was guys like Andrew Palace still and Jack Pollock and, um, you know, Gory and these types of guys that are fantastic guys. And these young guys want their spots, but man, you're not taking it away from Jack Paul and Andrew Palace and those guys. They're fantastic. No, no. They're, they're there until they move on to some other region or get signed or you know? whatever the case may yeah. be. Right. And you're trying to, you're trying to out, out shine facade on your entrance and you're just not doing it, man. Mm -hmm. And so those types of guys would sit in the corner and be like, well, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? And so that's when, rise had started and brandon had given me this you know this kind of mantra of like this is what i want to build and i was like great so i grabbed all of those guys every single one i brought in i was like we're gonna make these guys stars mm -hmm. and i brought in the guys that should have been stars years ago but something happened matt connard Derek direction um you know those types of guys guys that were not finding their voice yet in it like um uh, Calvin Couture is a great mm -hmm. example. I love mm -hmm. Calvin. Calvin hadn't found his voice yet, but like you saw something in him. You'd see that guy and you go, there's something. Great there. character right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the mm -hmm. bat. Right. But you, you were, he was still not much more than that character yes. at the time, right? And we were like, okay, that's so, a guy that I, yeah. uh, first time I saw Mambo, first time I saw Mambo Italian, I was like, that guy's got something mm -hmm. in there. So we started like bottling all these guys up. Okay, we're going to bottle all these guys up. And then you turn around and Jack Pollock and Lee Moriarty doing 30 minute draws. Mm -hmm. Matt Connor and Tony Johnson are going 30 minute Ironman matches. Um, you know, we're having these like phenomenal main events and these guys that are just kicking ass mm -hmm. and you go, well, these guys aren't up and coming anymore. They're stars. Mm -hmm. And so talking about it and working it out with Brandon and um, we decided that we needed to get back to the mission in a way. And that, doesn't mean cutting those guys because man, they're fantastic. It became what's the next brand? What's the next product? So then Uprise 
uh, is the new brand we're going to be running, Sunday shows, uh, probably this fall. Um, and that is going to be the guy, again, the, and I don't want to say names because we're not going there yet, mm. <laughs> but we've already talked to a lot of guys that are, and I'm sure there's people around the area and fans that go and, and just, I want you to think about who's the guy that you saw on a show that you went, man, I wish that guy got an opportunity. That's the guy I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. That's the guy I'm looking for. Are you taking requests from fans and such about things like yeah. that? Yeah. Send, so send, are... send them to our Facebook. Yeah. Send them to our Twitter. Yeah. Message us. Um, it's going to be predominantly, uh, because we're adding extra shows uh, on Sundays, a lot of it's going to be me and Matt taking a lot of it. And I, and I wanted mm-hmm. Matt because, um, and, and I'll, you, can t- you can touch on this because you haven't talked yet. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> when I... When I met Matt and when I talked to Matt, he has a special place because you were one of those like kind of not kicked around dudes, but like, man, you were looking for that niche where you fit in. And like Matt went through the you went through the character changes and like, okay, man, I'm just another spooky guy or I'm just this guy. How do I change? How do I evolve? And so I think like for you, you have a passion for that guy in the locker room who's sitting in the corner going like, man, how do I change? How do I break out? How do I find that thing? You know, I've been that lost guy who has all the passion in the world, but just doesn't know how to navigate it. It doesn't know who they are, but wants more than anything to find out. Like I ran into so many of those guys in our locker room, those guys and girls as like Badger and Lee. I mean, you've named them all. And, Even guys who aren't in our locker room, like RC yeah. and Argos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've come across them and I've seen them at their most. I mean, I guess the best way to put it is just they're these mounds of clay, mm-hmm. as you put it. Not sculpted yet. And have just watched them like slowly find it slowly just put things together it's the most gratifying thing in the world to watch them climb out of that pit because i've been in that pit yeah and it's a struggle no matter how how hard you're working or how your matches the quality of your matches are just sometimes people just look right through you and because you don't have this thing or you haven't found this thing that they want to see and that and that's the thing it's like and I think we have a good structure to be able to find that out of people too. Mm-hmm. And so like one of the reasons we like, I wanted Matt involved is because like, if you aren't that guy, it's really hard to teach that guy and work with that guy. I always make the joke of like, uh, Michael Jordan is the worst basketball coach you would ever have. Because whenever you go like Michael would do stuff and you would go like, well, how do I do it? He goes, just do it. I can just do it. Mm-hmm. And that's not how you teach. It's the guy who had to find it who can tell you, like, okay, this is how I found it. This mm-hmm. is how you have to do it. And, like, you and I said, Doe has been a, our mentor Absolutely. for both of us. Uh, and, like, Sam has brought all of that out of all of us. Whether he would take credit for it or not, Doe, Doe's the whole reason I found um, I found a comfortable place in who I am as a character and how to embrace and and find what, I guess, spooky is for me. <laughs> <laughs> and Doe's the master of the spooky guy. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's he's bred most of them in the area. Yeah. And you don't, I mean, you don't have his reputation without what he's done. Yeah. Um, but, like, what Doe instilled in both Matt and I, and he didn't train us. Like, no. base, I mean, you could say he mentored or trained us in a way, but I mean, and I mean, we, didn't, we didn't take the bumps. We didn't train with no. Doe. Not like some of those guys did. But he taught us like when he, when he takes interest in people like you or me or uh, Duke or guys like that, um, Derek, he's their Derek direction. He's taking a lot of that type of like hands-on approach. Mm. When you learn that type of stuff, the the immediate thing that he brings out of you is like, man, I want to do that for the next person. Like, like Doe taught me, uh, he said, never make a rookie buy you a beer. You buy him a beer so that you can talk to him. Those are the little things that he brought to us that has infiltrated rise in between what Doe has done for people like you, me, um, you know, like I said, Duke, 
Derek, those types of guys, and then what Brandon has done for all of those guys in that locker room. Brandon's training of, you know, Brandon's first rule of any training is you're a team and you, and you build each other up. You don't tear each other down. And that's kind of built our locker room and built this, this company in a way mm. that this new brand, I think, is going to flourish in a different type of way. We get so many guys like texting you and texting me of like, I want to be a part of this. Like, I see your locker room. I see what's happening. I hear people talking. I want to be involved. This is a good. This video you're showing is fantastic, by the way. Yeah, this is the uh, after the show. Um, a, a fan that was uh, going into surgery, and everybody came out uh, to uh, wish him well at the end of the last ride show, and and it, it demonstrates uh, the locker room, and you can see the locker room uh, involved there and everything. So I just thought this was a good kind of show off for this for everybody that's uh, kind of joining us on video. And, and that's a perfect illustration of uh, what. Brandon and his family have, have brought into us and what the next level of this can be and what the next mission is going to be. I, I know it's kind of fun. Um, uh, somebody was referring to uh, Brandon's wife as, as the, 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 the soccer mom of the yeah. uh, locker room, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. So like, and there's a, a cool dynamic that happens there. It, it really is. And, and like I said, the, um, the new product, which we, which we are calling Uprise, um, which Matt totally came up with, which credit where credit is due, is a fantastic moniker for what the company is. The company was all about originally uh, rising and these rising stars that we're going to find. And I think that's what the brand is still in. But Uprise is so much about these young uh, men and women who are finding their footing in the business, who are, are going to jam it in your face mm -hmm. of – this is going to be, we're, we're not people to be ignored. Um, we have a passion for this and we're going to do that. And that's, I mean, that's the people we're looking for is a hundred percent. The passionate, the people that are up at one in the morning <laughs> watching dumb wrestling and texting about it. Like we are. And talking about it on a podcast for a good long time. Yeah. On a and, Tuesday night. And that's also why the, uh, we're so like narrow on the experience level when it comes to who we're looking for yeah. because it's those guys that are really having the roughest go of it right now. And that's the thing is like, look, if you're, if you're a kid who's, and I use the term kid cause I'm so old. Um, <laughs> if you're, if you're a guy or a girl who's, you know, in your second year and the second year is so hard, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause that first year is just like, you're all potential. And you're all like, yeah, and everyone's helping you and that type of thing. And then year two is that like, what are you doing here? Mm. Like, are you, are you getting work? What are you doing? It's like yeah. second year is the hardest. And then like third year is where you completely doubt yourself. Like, <laughs> third year is where you go like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. I'm not getting where I w thought I would be. I thought by now things would be different. Mm -hmm. um, like you didn't hit on – the Reaper character until what year two end of year two going into three. Yeah. Up till then I was just dude in a leather vest with a chin beard, like generic wrestler. Number three. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was just a moniker at that point. Yeah. Like I had not discovered anything that would become what it is now. And yeah. I, I, at that point just figured, well, I'm just going to wrestle in this part of the state for the rest of my life. Cause <laughs> I've clearly not made any moves in all that time. And then like when I met you, it was more formed, but it was a spooky mask and a cloak and a noose. I was, yeah, at that point I had, that was, I was in my second round of evolution. But you were point. like more window dressing than character. Big time. Yeah. But I was far more just guy in a mask and a, in a vest cloak. Yeah. <laughs> I love vests. <laughs> I love vests. Big fan of the vests. I, it was a more of a hoodie. I just threw up. You guys will see in a moment, but I threw up the uh, the noose look. Uh, I'm uh, still trying that, to find. That was about That's, when you got to Pittsburgh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was around my like my. I just got the black diamond, basically. Yeah, and you were starting. I mean, remix was there for you, and you were starting to do headless horsemen. Like you're there with those types of guys. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you're coming out of the antihero stuff. Coming out of the anti hero, I'm, I'm giving the whole Matt Connor. Yeah, we're just going th anthology. We're, we're just going through my. But history. like, what, what I'm trying to get to is, is like, when you got to Pittsburgh, you were a different character than you are now, big time. But like, I, like so much of it in that year three, year four, even 
is like window dressings and, and so many like Matt and I used to have these long conversations when we like first met and we drive places or we talk to places and Matt would just be like, man, I just, I feel like I'm doing what everyone else is doing. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to break through. And we'd have long talks about like, okay, what about this? Or what about that? Mm. And even I was too green and too young to understand what I'm just giving you is window dressings or what I'm just giving you is like that type of stuff. Right. And then again, that you're five, you're six, you're seven, you start to figure it out. You start to be able to do it. That's old Mac on it. There it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. In jeans in front of a green screen. <laughs> yeah. Stiffly and, plugging a show. Mountain State Wrestling, Fox 59. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that, that that's, is a stance that's, right there. That's year one Matt Connard. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Thank and you, so, thank you, Google Images. For, it's not hard to find. No. And so, like, I think that's why we both have had a passion for what the next generation Because I see these, like, okay, I'll drop a couple names. Okay. Because, I, I mean, some of these guys, you see them and you go, like, man, they should be doing more. Uh, first one I'll throw out is, is Billy Ruxpin. Yeah. You see a kid like Billy, and I look at him and go, like, Billy's in, I think, like, that year two. And Billy can come out and be a babyface. And Billy can come out and do that. And Billy can come out and work. And he puts on good matches. But he needs that opportunity to find himself. And that's the big thing was... You, what you got and what uh, what uh, Pollock got in a weird way and what Andrew Palace got um, and these types of guys that are on top now was a place to find yourself. Mm -hmm. And to us, I think the Sundays are an ability to like, okay, how do we find it? How do we, f how do you find who you are in a support structure with guys like you and guys like Doe and guys like Jake and Brandon and myself who are willing to push that and find it. I really don't want to skip over the fact of how instrumental Jake was yeah. for yeah. my development. Because Jake was the first person when I moved to this area to actually believe in me and buy into me. Yeah. Because I think at that point I'd been at PWX maybe... Maybe a year? A year at that point. Yeah. And just nothing was happening. Like, for whatever reason, just, you know, Quinn wasn't buying it. Mm-hmm. No, uh, I mean that's that's his call. You didn't see anything, that's fine. But I just felt like I had more to offer, and I felt like I was stuck. And night one at Black Diamond, Jake instantly was like, "I can do something with you." Yeah. Like he saw something, and he was willing to invest in it. One of my favorite lines uh, Jinx said recently was, um, "Jake Garrett didn't just believe in me, believe in Jinx." Uh, Jake Garrett made Jinx believe in Jinx. Exactly. And wow. that's what Jake was so good at. There's no better way to describe it than that. Um, Jake found a way to make you believe in you. Um, and, and we've, that's, that's the kind of brand we want to build here. And it's, it's a different type of idea. And so like for fans that are going to come to the show, um, we're going to be Sundays. It's going to be probably afternoons. Mm -hmm. um, it's an early show. More than likely, we're, we're looking at like a four, four or a six bell. Somewhere mm -hmm. around there. We haven't discussed exact times yet. Um, we're probably going to be fighting football. Um, so our bell might move around. So you're going to have to watch us because we want to give people the opportunity to watch the Steelers and watch football and that type of stuff. And that, that happens. Um, uh, we haven't landed on a ticket price yet, but it will be a discounted ticket. It's mm -hmm. not going to be the same as our normal shows or same as any other product around here, because what you're going to get is some, some clay. It's mm -hmm. going to be some of that stuff, mm -hmm. but the, the benefit is, is you get to be there and buy in early. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that was, I loved that. It feels like, um, you know, I talked a bit on the show recently about going to those uh, NXT Armory shows where mm -hmm. you see a lot of people that are figuring things out in that developmental system, right? You don't see the people even that are on TV on NXT where they there's something that they have figured out, right? Um, so it's kind of that kind of side of it. Like It's kind of like you're looking for the next thing, which is the exciting thing about indie wrestling in general is going to a Rise, going to an IWC, going to something like this mm -hmm. and seeing those guys pop up you know, like a Daniel Eads getting punched out by Gargano a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. And you saw him at RWA or, or whoever else is going to come from the area, you know, and you're just kind of adding another level of that where yeah. it's the, an indie fan can see, well, I remember when this guy was just doing these show, these these development shows with Rise and now they're doing 
whatever on the main roster with you or somebody else or maybe a remix or somebody else that's a bigger yes indie you know and and growing their name that way as one should do and the thing is is like when we talk to fans and we get fan interaction one of the big things they fans say is like oh i remember when he first started yeah yeah oh i remember when logan shula was doing ring crew yep mm. Yep, or tore my ticket is one, yeah, one that Matt, we talked uh, about recently. Matt, Matt Chester said that. I yeah, remember tearing yeah. tickets with Matt with Logan Shulo, and, and now he's on WrestleMania. Yep. Like, how cool is that? Yep. And on a level, like, that's the thing we want to give people is the ability to buy into these these men and women. And they're, I use the term, I mean, they're going to be, I mean, they're young. But at the same time, you and I know so many dudes and so many women that have, Man, they've put the time in, they've put the effort in, and for some reason, it's no one's seen it. Mm. And like there's these there's these guys and girls out there that you see and you go, like, man, how come no one saw that? Mm -hmm. And I think there's untapped potential out there. So we want to and the like the other thing I wanted to do, and and I love history, is Pittsburgh has always been a hub of the nexus of the Ohio's man, where the where the fork of the Ohio's. Um, you know, ships came through here, trains came through here. We were the port town and I want to be that town again. Mm -hmm. So if you, I want guys from Chicago, I want guys from Philadelphia. I want guys from, uh, deep West Virginia or North Carolina or those type of, I see, man, there's great wrestling in North Carolina right now. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're willing to come up and make connections and learn stuff and, Work on your craft with us. Um, we're going to give you an opportunity. We're going to do something for you. I want Pittsburgh to be what it was when Shirley Doe was running what he was running. Because when Doe was on top and Doe was the mastermind behind Pittsburgh Wrestling, yeah, you were getting um, the Troy Lords and the Justin Idols and the Dean Radfords of that era and those guys that were local on top. But man, you were getting CM Punk's and Chris Hero and Chris Daniels and Chris Saban from Michigan and Colt Cabana and those types of guys coming through. IWC at that time got to see CM Punk before CM Punk was CM Punk. And uh, Chris Hero when he was wearing a wife beater. Uh, and that's, yeah, pre when he was like a white like, trash. Like, like pre Superman shirt? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. Those types of guys that you, that came through in that era that I remember getting to see a very, very young, fabulous John McChesney, skinny and with uh, barely there finished tights uh, and seeing that guy and um, M-Dog and Josh Prohibition when they would mm -hmm. come through. Um, I remember I remember seeing Gory when he was in the coalition competition doing ring crew and, and um, getting to see his first experience and stuff like Shima. that. Shima. Shima is when he had that hair and then he shaved it. The, and everyone... <laughs> uh, the Filipino <laughs> supermodel, I believe he was to me. And those, and the thing is, is like, I talked to guys like Dombrowski and they, these, these, these people want to buy those DVDs. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Let's get on the ground floor, man. Mm -hmm. Let's find them now. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so we're super duper excited about it as far as, um, to me, wrestling is about paying it forward and this is the next way to do it. It's awesome. So keep an eye on the rise, social media, of course, there yeah. will be, there will be a video product of some sort, shape or form. Yeah. Depending on things and technologies and such. We'll talk that out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to, and I would love fan suggestion as well on that. Of mm -hmm. what you, how do you want the product delivered to you? And and we talked about maybe even delivering it kind of in a different way than everything else does. Yeah. Right. Um, so and I think that makes a lot of sense with something like this, which is a you know, discussion we're having with indie wrestling us yes. and everything as well that's developing. Obviously, this is the early announcement. This is the this is the is more form than an XFL in announcement. Yes. I think. Uh at this <clears throat> point. Way more. At least fall is where we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Um there's a few structural things we gotta take on the show yeah there's still still a few things that we pitch but we haven't really yeah and, and i'll like so i'll reveal a little bit of this on on this end because i got more time and i don't think we <laughs> and i don't think we, we did we talk about the structure you did on the show earlier but i don't no, think we talked about the structure of the structure like yeah so and there's a little bit of hammering out a little bit of fine details of how mm -hmm. we get into it and that's mm -hmm. a longer conversation that we'll get to mm -hmm. but um 
So if you haven't followed Rise, if you haven't seen our stuff, um, we run in an old movie theater, mm-hmm. which is air conditioned and it's fantastic. <laughs> and now and now heated as well um, for those winter months. Um, but because we ran an old movie theater, um, when I came on, I was dead set of every one of our posters is a knockoff of a movie poster. Mm-hmm. And that's been kind of like kind of a motif at Rise. Yeah is the idea of because we run this movie theater we do kind of a movie theme stuff and and credit to uh jesse uh, who does our posters who always does cool knockoff and i throw him ideas and some of them are the wildest ideas i could come up with and he manages to make them look fantastic the, yeah. gu- the guy's great that fa- this face off poster is probably my favorite poster. The, yeah the new one for july which was um I, Matt had pitched it a long time ago of like, I want to do a face off poster. Like if we ever get to a point where I'm, I'm like facing for the title again. Like I want to do a face off poster. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And then uh, I saw the poster and I was like, that'd be really good. And then I realized that like, we don't have the pictures. Like, yeah. we, like, cause it's a very specific, very like, distinct, distinct like. look of their two faces. So literally I like, we were at a show and I grabbed Damien and I go like, I need these pictures. Damien takes the pictures, nails the poster. It, it's one of the cool. So, like, that's been a big part of it. There it is. That's on the thing. Oh, yeah. man, it's so pretty. I love that poster. It's been, like, it's a perfect face-off poster. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're super psyched about that. So we, you and I were talking, Matt and I were, and we were like, well, how do we make it different? If we're doing movies and we run a movie theater, how can we make it different? And Matt and I both have a, a pretty decent passion for video games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you've ever listened to the wrestling with death with Matt Conard, uh, we get into usually like, we used to do like a, what you're playing type of segment. Oh, that was, more, that was more of our nerd podcast. Yeah. Oh, that's our Avengers. One. Oh yeah. Man, that one's good too. <laughs> <laughs> that one was, um, Oh God, what's it called? The robot movie Pacific Rim. The and Grim. then that was ready player one. Um, all of them have kind of had like, like cool. Little movies. So we're like, we want to do a video game theme. Yeah. That was kind of the idea. And then, um, the idea became, okay, everyone on this roster and, and everything like that, are we going to have a title? What are they wrestling for? Because you, you got to have a reason to wrestle. Not just like, hey, we're all getting better. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and with most new, I guess, promotions or mm-hmm. branch offs, whatever you want to call it, everyone always expects eventually is going to, everyone's got a champion. Yeah. It's like, I'm the champion of this, but this is, it's kind of like the NXT yeah. motif where i'm the champion here yeah but eventually i'm gonna come up here and be champion here it's just and the, that's the thing is like is the nxt champion any more important or less important than the intercontinental champion mm-hmm. that's a weird question and a really weird debate that you can have yeah which is a whole nother show exactly but what i'm yeah go ahead yeah but i think we're getting the same point yeah. um <laughs> but the concept of Considering it's basically developmental, kind of, um, the ultimate prize being getting to the show. Yeah. Like, it's not a title. It's not a medal or any, a trophy. It's you're fighting for the opportunity to get to the show that everybody that everyone wants, wants to, be to be at. Yeah. And that's that was the – and so we're like, okay. So these are the guys – and we talk, we talked about it. These are the guys and girls who want to be on Rise and they want to be on other shows and they're finding it harder to get there because they just need that, like, those extra bats, man. They just need to get a little better. Mm -hmm. So develop, get to a point where you are, win an opportunity. And so we came up with this weird idea um, of uh, what we're calling, I guess, a token. Yeah. So you you can win a token at rise or an uprise. And what that token gives you the opportunity to do is to cash in for what I'm, I've been dubbing a boss fight. And what a boss fight will be is when you cash in your token, you will face a randomly selected member of the rise main roster. And if you can beat that person, you make it to the main roster. Now it literally will be a, like no one will know going into the show. We're not advertising who it's going to be. It's not so you it's, find out. So it's not come Sunday and Matt Connor will be there or, no. or Duke Davis. You're, or something everyone's like going to find out when they find out in the ring. Um, the fans are going to find out at the same time. Um, and uh, much like 
uh, and I got the inspiration from Smash Brothers of uh, when a new a new challenger approaches and you have to be ready for it. Um, so it it literally could be uh, Keith Hot, it could be Edric Everhart, mm-hmm. it could be Duke Davis, it it could be anyone on that roster at any time. There's no one off limits. Yeah. Um, who that could be. And I think that's the most exciting portion of it is we get to tell some interesting stuff and then we get to see where they are, man. Can you hang with one of the guys that do this, you know, on the main roster? And basically if you can't, they kind of just go back to the bottom of the barrel. Like yeah. there's no, like I deserve a rematch. Nope. I deserve no nope. back to the bottom. Back of the to the bottom and try it over. You, you, you couldn't cut it. Hmm. Figure it out again. Um, you lose a life. Uh, ah, well, well yeah. there's a talk about an extra life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as well as what we're doing at Rise, uh, Uprise would be uh, fully intergender as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, men and women. Uh, opportunity has, in our uh, opinion, has no gender. Um, it has no... Uh, opportunity is for everyone. And that's something that we've been really focused on uh, at Rise as well, of giving people an opportunity and not going like, well, I'm sorry, uh, but you have there's no other woman for you to fight tonight, so you're not on the show. Right. If you deserve to be here and you're bu- busting through, then you're going to get a shot. Um, so that's what we want that show to be. Um, opportunity for everyone who wants to be involved in it. Um, and so like, you're going to see a decent amount of students from – our academy that's gonna be a big part of it Mm -hmm. um and so if you are sitting out there and man you're jazzed about this and you want to be a part of it um you can message me you can message the facebook page Mm -hmm. um if you're a kid out there who wants to if you're 17 18 and you're like man i want to be a part of that and i want to i want to wrestle hit us up come to the academy i mean that's going to be a way to get in and that's going to be a way to get that opportunity and a way to uh, experience something that um, I never, I never thought I experienced a community like this. I thought I'd get into wrestling and I'd be like, oh, this is going to be the community. And then it wasn't. Yeah. And it was just like a click. And then things, I would say this, things across Pittsburgh have changed dramatically in the last like two to yeah, three years. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because um, we talked about a lot on the Stomp Out Cancer uh, episode a couple of weeks ago about how that seemed to start this like yeah. positivity and Pittsburgh wrestling movement. Mm-hmm. Matt and, and I really think rise is still even at the center of that. Matt and Ken did a fantastic job of doing that, mm-hmm. of bringing to a cause that we all went. Yeah, of course, mm-hmm. but there have been other causes and there have been other shows and you and I have done those shows mm-hmm. where they go like it's for X and you should come on guys. And you go, yes. And because of the shadiness behind the people that did it, you and I have walked out of those shows where we go, did we really do anything? Did we accomplish anything? Did we, did any money go to this? Did we actually do good? And you feel great, but you don't know. But Matt and Ken have been two guys that in the area have been well-known and well-established and trustworthy and those guys, when they tell you something, it means something. And so when they came with a process and they, we want to do this and then attaching Brandon, who was the most trustworthy guy in wrestling, hands down, uh, it said it in a different way. And I remember doing that first show, man, it was a great vibe. Mm. Um, you, uh, what would you, what did you do on the first show? Uh, it was, uh, me and Lawless. That's right. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of weird, like. Oh, you might not see this match before. I remember it was the Pollock, Duke, De Niro, and Christian Christian. Noir Mm -hmm. as a main event. And that was a, like, uh, man, I remember those three giant dudes. Yeah. And there's Christian. And (laughs) everyone kept joking the entire time. Like, "Mm, something doesn't belong here because he's a short little (laughs) dude. And I remember going like, dude, don't don't let that phase you. You're going to go out there. You're going to be a star tonight. Christian stood out in that match. He, Mm -hmm. like... He held held his own at a time when I, even I was like, I don't know if he's ready. Man, he he was fantastic, and that was like, I remember him coming back. He, I mean, he ate Darren's finish, and I thought he died. He made it look terrific. Oh my god, I thought he died, and he came back, and I gave him a huge hug, and he was so happy, and it was like, oh, this is what this can be. 
we can all do this together. And so, like, I would go out to, like, IWC shows because, like, you were doing things here or there and Paul yeah. was doing stuff. I remember talking, like, and I'll give uh, a lot of credit to um, Palace. Man, that kid's a positive force. And I remember talking to him and being like, this is what I want wrestling to be. And him just being like, yeah, that's what I want it to. Like, he's, like, so jazzed. And you're <laughs> like, yeah, man, like, that's what I wanted to be. And he's like, well, let's just do it. And I was like, I guess we could. And, like, guys like him um, were really great with doing that. And, like, uh, to be fair, like, and he got put over hardcore recently on uh, Facebook. Chris Taylor was another one. Uh, Chris was always a positive force mm -hmm. and, like, kind of stuck in a rut. And I think when Chris came out of his, Brandon opened up Rise and, like, um, getting Doe and Jake and all these guys kind of wrapped into the product. Um, I think people started believing in, in it a little more. And everything started, like... Pittsburgh wrestling's in like a good, calm place right now. Everyone's kind of getting along. There's not really and, a lot of heat. And and people are showing up, you know, yeah. uh, pretty much across the board. Yeah. So I draws mean, are up for everyone. Yeah. Um, and now could they be up more? I think we'd all love our draws. To be up oh, more. yeah. You know, you're not happy until you got to move out of your venue, you know, <laughs> until you go like, hey, we can't fit enough people here. Yeah. We got to move. Yeah. But draws are up. Everyone's kind of communicating. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll say on my end, you know, at IWC, uh, Justin Plummer's been fantastic. Um, he's supported us and given us opportunities and, and done good business with us. Mm -hmm. um, I still have a really good relationship with Derek over at RWA. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit for him. I left on good terms. But he's always been a, a good supporter of, of what we try to do. And he's always been friends with Brandon. Brandon worked for Derek for a long time. And mm -hmm. They were good. And even to this day, like uh, Quinn and I, like um, we have a good habit right now of every show, like when he has a show or when I have a show, we'll text each other a good luck and we hope you do well and things like that, that we kind of have a good relationship going. Um, there's bridges being built everywhere right now. And, and to me it, and to Brandon, especially on our end, and I know everyone else, man, I think everyone was just tired of it. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think, and I think it's a lot of this generation of, of wrestlers too. Mm -hmm. They're way more positive than our generation was. Like, yeah. uh, like, try to tell a Lee Moriarty of like, like, oh man, like this or that, or you know, this is my. And he's like, how did you guys function? Like, this stuff's awesome. I love doing this stuff. Like, I yeah. love wrestling. Yeah, these guys are way more positive. I don't know if it's just the and new generation, and, and I think it shows in the ring and shows in the what's going out. You know especially now with social media like this is also a generation that understands how to use that a little better yeah uh you know i was growing up with it and know how to adapt that to what they're doing yeah so. it, like it, just recently like the chris taylor stuff that happened on facebook mm -hmm. where so many people come out and support chris and then like what was it like a week or so later after jake was like a, like leaving black diamond there was this rush of support this wave jake. of support for jake as well that's the positivity that's coming out of this area mm -hmm. right now and mm -hmm. it's different and it's so exciting to be a part of and so like for us uh uprise was the next logical step it's awesome how do how do we bring positivity to those those kids that are left behind i hate to use that term you know i, I mean but it, they're not left behind they're just they no one's found them yet that's a good that's a way better point yeah they're, um, the, they're the lost boys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're broken toys, man, and we're going to fix them. Marcus, man. Yeah. Reaper. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> Rise Wrestling on all your social media. Keep an eye out for all the further announcements and details as they develop here. As This is happening. It's for real. It's happening. It's and like real. I said, uh, if you are interested, mm -hmm. I want your feedback, man. I want everyone's feedback. I'll talk. I'll talk for another hour about it. Send me questions. Send me and stuff. And of course, we'll be sharing here with WrestlingMayhemShow.com and yeah. uh, IndieWrestling.us as well. Uh, where are you guys online? Uh, at Reaper Matt C. Oh, that's, oh, that's you. Oh, that's, that's me. you. That's yeah. him. That's you. Um, at Marcus Man VHS. <laughs> <laughs> um, just ProWrestlingTees.com slash Matt Connor. Goodbye. Buy his oh. shirts, dude. Buy his shirts. I have a lot of that shirts. That I Am The Night shirt is one of the coolest wrestling shirts Period. I love that shirt. That's one of my favorites. It's been one of my most popular ones, too. Really? And you can buy that. 
They're on sale right now. Use the code word America for 20% off. Ooh. Probably not by the time we're posted later. No, it's though. running. It's running till the 6th. Oh, we're posting after that. Yeah. Go, yes. go anyway, because I love you. There you go. There you go. There's um, some shirts. Oh, wow. Those are some cool designs. See? <laughs> that's awesome. I haven't seen a lot of these. The Spook yeah. Show one's They're, new. Ooh, yep. Spook I Show's up. Nice. That's a new one. I yeah. love Matt shirts. Matt's got a really good designer and a really good t-shirt. Yeah, guy. George Durbin, he does great work. If you're looking for graphic work, hit him up. Great, fantastic stuff. And then obviously, uh, Rise Wrestling on Facebook, Rise underscore Wrestling Instagram, Twitter. Um, I, again, I can't express this enough. If you are a fan of professional wrestling and you want to see something different, uh, let us know. I'm listening. Like. I know that's a very Frasier way to end the, the fucking episode. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And of course, everybody check everything out. Rise Wrestling, Indie Wrestling. US. And until next time, support Indie Wrestling. I'm an animal. Put a taste of the pain. Sing, sing, sing. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Steady sip and check. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media dot com.